But you know what? If you're around somebody, I can be around for somebody 15, 20 minutes, and I can know how they voted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just kind of <laughs> talk to them just a little bit, get a little bit investigated. Just just bullshit. You're yeah, like, oh, take, I know which way you're going. Like if they start announcing their pronouns, you're pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I leave. Yeah. <laughs> and if it's for business purposes, I charge them double. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Talking about dates. Yeah. <laughs> That's our lives now. Yeah. 15 years ago, it would have been something real exciting. Right. <laughs> so, Scott Jones, Mr. Scott Jones. Mr. Randy Wilcox. Yes. yes. Now we've got the introductions out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Scott, uh, to just kind of give us a little bit of introduction to yourself, uh, what it is that you do currently, uh, and then we'll go to... Currently, everything you've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, I own uh, Oasis Security Systems here in Exeter for 20, I think we're on our 22nd year now. Wow. And uh, I also run Scotty's Woodworks out of here in Exeter as well, a woodshop, custom woodshop. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You guys uh, made our table at the, the tavern. I did. That's a that's, great table. That's mm-hmm. a, that. That's, uh, I geek out over the wood, so oh, I, know, yeah. I know where all that wood came from. Oh, yeah. Yeah, as you said, everything's got a story to it. Which uh, it has to. That's awesome. That's a great way to, to, to look at it. So, like, this table mm-hmm. is a reel, a wire reel, a guy at work that uh, took it, broke it down, told him I wanted a coffee table made, and, of course, he was like, why a coffee table? Everybody was doing, you know, bar top tables, the yeah. big ones, and then they do the... Uh, little burn, you know, with the electronic, with like, the microwave yeah. motors, or like a neon sign motor, little transformer. Scary stuff. Oh yeah, it's actually really cool. Those it's guys are cool, but it's crazy, super scary. <laughs> yeah, so it, I had them, you know, put all this together, and I mean, doesn't have much of a story other than we pulled wire off of it at one point. No, that's cool though. <laughs> I mean, it, there's something to it though. It yeah, well, it was something. Yeah, you know, it's not trash. Oh yeah, it's not in the burn pile. It's there's something. There's something to be said for that, you know, when you can repurpose and grab something that's going to go into the, not necessarily the landfill, but All right. for us, it would be in the bonfire on, uh, a on a night. Saturday night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And some other things. Um, right. But then now this will last another 50, 75 years. And this kind of seems like that's where a lot of it is gone, you know, like, well, like what, what, what you're doing with Scotty, Scotty's Woodworks mm-hmm. is you're you know, grabbing, it's this real cool craft movement towards things, you know, where yeah. you're repurposing, refurbishing things, you know, and it's it's got such a cool style to it, you know, and it's just a, you see a lot of people doing really neat stuff. Oh, it, yeah, you know? and there's people that do way better work than I do, but I just, I, I geek out um, on the story, yeah. you know, on the story, and I build new stuff too. I buy new wood. I'm not going to pretend I only use <laughs> wood with a story right um but it, you know when it comes to hardwood you, you gotta buy it I buy something new and hit it with a hammer and it, no, no, a few no. times. <laughs> i'm not no, saying no, i haven't done that <laughs> <laughs> i haven't drug it behind the truck down the road yeah um but you know it's 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 cooler when it's a story because like with the table when you guys ordered the table for the tavern i immediately knew which wood that i was going to be using right. and you know that came out of i think it was the last the last job that the Lemon Cove sawmill did in 34. Oh, wow. <laughs> 19, yeah, he knows the story behind it. 1934, like. and we took the barn out of Lemon Cove because um, it was going to be destroyed. So we took as much wood as we could. And, right. And then you guys wanted that table. I was like, oh, come on, man. We got to use that wood. Yeah. You know, things Love like it. 12 feet long. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, We're going to have to knock a wall down to get it out. I mean, because you had to build it in there. I basically built it in pieces and brought it in and assembled it. So inside. we moved it out of the bank, banquet room That's and put good. it into the main floor, That's finally, good. which we'd done that a little bit ago. To show maybe. it off. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's, man. Because that's what I kept telling you. I'm like, yeah, come on. Well, because we were, we actually had a lot of people using the banquet room at yeah, a certain point. Sure. And yeah. then it just got to where I, it was just like you said. I was like, man, I'm tired of, you know, walking past the door when nobody's in there. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and the table's just sitting there and it's such mm-hmm. a great table. 
you know, I just need to bring it back out. I do see pictures on Instagram um, of that table, and oh, yeah. it's not of the table. It's people at the tavern taking pictures of themselves in the background. I the see tables always <laughs> in the background. Yeah, because I see and see that logo, your logo, oh, yeah. right in the middle of it, and epoxy yep. in, inlaid it, and that was that was a feat all on its all on its own. Because I did, I don't have help in the shop. Right. It started out as a hobby. Remember? Yeah. And <laughs> It's not a hobby anymore, you know, and then, right. and then I had to move all that myself yeah. and I had to get help to move it, of course, but it was, uh, that, that's, that's one of my, that's one of my favorite pieces it's, only, only because of the story. It's, it's awesome. I, I mean, we, we really appreciate it. It's such a, it, it's a big focal point, a big centerpiece to the place, you know? Yeah. Now we got part of that, of that same wood that's in our house too. I all just, right. I just recently built a table that, that came out of that same barn. Oh, wow. And I had it s- pushed aside for art because I knew my wife was going to want another table at some point. Right. So I pushed that wood aside and was like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm just going to wait. Yeah. Cause I was chewing through it pretty good. And I was like, I'm going to save a little bit for us. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, uh, so we have a table in our house from the same wood with the same story in it. That's at the table that you have at the tavern. And that's the connection where it all gets tied in. Yeah. And there's, there's, that that woods all over the all over the state. That's also cool. Yeah, that, even that thought is pretty neat. Yeah, and there's some. I think I built a sign that went to England. Out of that really? Sign. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Through Instagram, I've gotten I've gotten to to send some pieces. Um, I think Switzerland and England and all all over the place. It's pretty cool. So when you say like this was you know your hobby and now has become a bit of a another job mm-hmm. amongst. The jobs you have and had. Right, right. How did how did it actually become? How first of all, how did you how did it become a hobby? Why was it that hobby? Well, I, I think we need to go further a little bit further back. Is my dad built cabinets when I was a kid? Oh, okay, and so I I think he quit doing that when I was maybe a freshman in high school. But before that, I used to have to help him, and uh, oh, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate, the, I figured out later, I didn't hate the wood. I just hated working with my dad. You know, <laughs> hey. I, I learned how to hold. <laughs> Might know something about that too. Uh, <laughs> I learned how to, I learned how to hold the light in the wrong place, hold shit the wrong way. <laughs> wow. Where do you know? Hand and if I was tool. on the other side of the shop and something happened on the other side of the shop, it was my fault because I wasn't doing something. I wasn't holding it right somewhere. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. But you know, I mean, it's all, it's all relative, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. made us who we are today. But that's, a, that's but, how you've learned. Yeah. <laughs> a little learned, bit of a, learned how not to do it first, right? Yeah, pretty and, much. Um, when I was in my other career, I uh, was told I needed a hobby because all I was doing was I worked two full time jobs and was told I needed a hobby. So I just started doing a little bit of woodworking in the garage and figured out that I, if I had just started, never touched wood at all, never took wood shop or worked with that or whatever i was way ahead of that i already knew because i sure i had that young introduction yeah you know so i picked up pretty quick to it just because and and then like anything else i do hobbies turn into jobs <laughs> so I now think, I've been, i think i have the same problem to now, be honest with you <laughs> well now i've been told uh what's your hobby i'm like oh i got the wood shop and oh yeah well so what do you tell me about that Tell right. them, and it was like, okay, what's your hobby? I'm like, my hobby's a what? I just told you what's my hobby. Yeah. Like, no, that's a business. What's your hobby now? Well, that's your like, fault for inviting people in yeah. to it, basically <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah, and dude. Look what I'm doing. They're like, I want one. Yeah. You're like, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I just don't, uh, this hobby, you know, works fine, but the hobby business is hard uh, trying yeah. to find hobbies. Yeah. Because you tend to turn them into um, it, it'd be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and and then they have to generate income because there's there's bills that go on with it. There's right. a shop, and there's the, I you know I'm I'm a I don't pay bills out of the shop, but right. I buy new tools, which is fun too. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that that's a that could be your hobby, buying tools. Buying tools, but I got to work at another job. I mean, you don't think the about tool. the your job that supplies your hobby because. You make the money through your job. The hobby is just going shopping for tools and buying. Mm-hmm. Women use shopping as a hobby. Why don't you? It's just tools. Yeah, but they use our work as their hobby. So I guess too. it's kind of the same thing, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're yeah. using yourself too. I'm using my. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good at that too. Uh. Um, <laughs> but, you know, just, it, I never expected to get, um, 
you know, I moved out of the garage pretty quick and never expected to be what it is now. Right. Ever. You know, the, the Instagram following, the, um, how, how many followers do you have right now? It fluctuates, but 36,000. That's cool. That's super change. impressive. It gets to, you know, 40 and then you know, if you don't post. Yeah. Real consistently, you tend to lose. Oh yeah, there's like a whole there's a whole game in that too. Yeah, right? and I've you know the the algorithm. Yeah, which the algorithm I had it locked down, and then as soon as COVID hit, that whatever alg- I don't know whatever <laughs> yeah. I did, it changed. No, it did change. I noticed it. With I was going from two hundred fifty thousand really? views, mm-hmm. a million views on some stuff, to fifteen hundred overnight. I'm like, what happened? Wow. But I try not to chase that. It's, it's not right. about that. But you do say, well, what, what's was it everybody staying home? I don't know. They were, I don't. I don't know what happened. They were that. They were finding their hobbies too. Yeah, and you know we've made real good contacts. I worked with some companies and some people. You know, we'll call celebrities that I've made pieces for that have been um, that came through Instagram. And right. I mean, it's cool stuff, man. That's awesome. I mean, I don't. You know, I've I've built some boards and some, you know, some cutting boards and signs. And if they're my, I'm not going to call them my hero because that's a whole different podcast. <laughs> but, um, you know, people that I admire or, you know, and they, and then all of a sudden they're in your, in your DMs or they're sending you an email. You know, first of all, you're like, all right, buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think it's one of my buddies pulling a prank. You know? <laughs> it's like, I really love your work. You know, I'd like to have a piece, you know, how much for this cutting board with this inlaid in it, you know? And I'm like, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> How many follow you? You got three million followers. You just post the shit out of right. that thing, mm-hmm. and I'll sell more off of that free board or that free sign. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. and and it's it's been cool. You know, it's that's been, neat. Yeah. No, and that's smart too. I mean, that's obviously you take that. You know, like you said, it's a hobby, but you also approach it with a businessman kind of perspective. You know, so and and like you probably. Like you said, it's like your hobby ends up turning into a job. It's hard not to do things like that. You know, you're always, you're probably like me where you're kind of like walking down the street and you're just analyzing everything in that kind of oh, yeah. same regard. Like you're looking at it and yeah, just I mean, kind of breaking it down in your own mind of like, how does that work? You know, like, well, top how does to bottom. that work? But you also look at other people. You, I, I tend, I used to look at people and go like, what do they do for a job that they could have all that stuff? Yeah. You know, like right. what, what's what's their job? Right. I don't see them working and I'm sweating. I'm bleeding. I'm hurting. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm disgusting right now. I feel disgusting right now. I'm so tired and sweaty and right. What's that dude doing? You know, mm-hmm. and you just, it's not for everybody. Well, it's looking know? to better yourself. Right. And trying to look at it from that, from that perspective. It's not even that you're looking to chase the money necessarily. No. It's like more of the, you're looking at the time. Like you said, that guy's not, busting his ass the way that I am. Right. And he seems to be doing pretty damn well. But he's, but I'm doing it and you're doing it the only way that we know how. That's it. And they've done it. I'm not going to say smarter, but smarter in a sense, but they also don't get the gratification of doing something with these hands. One well, learning, right? That was one thing we had talked about before. Like Absolutely. what you learn from the, the, your failures, your mistakes, you know, your well, pain. You, you got it. We you're got growing it. from that. We all have to learn how to fail. Yeah. You have to learn how to fail. Fail, failing sucks, man. I mean, you're you're an athlete like I was. You know, I mean, losing sucks. Yeah. (laughs) But but what makes you want to go? What makes you want to succeed is the fear of failing again. Right. Or knowing what that knowing what that feeling is. Yeah. I don't ever want to lose again. Yeah. And I lose. I do plenty of losing. Yeah. But it the the constant nagging of what that what that failure or that losing feels like. That, right. That's, I don't want that. I don't want my kids to have that. But then again, I do. Right. You know, right. I want them to feel that pain because they're not going to learn. If, if all the data they've ever collected is, if I don't, is that I win and I win, I win, I win. Every and if time. I don't win, mom and dad make sure I win, mm, yeah. you know, then what happens when they're 30 years old and they lose? Right. And they can never lost. You right, know what happened? Right. I learned how to lose early. Donald Trump is president. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it just exactly. falls apart. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 2016 exactly. is when every 30 year old lost for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> had to take off work. Um, we, uh, um, but you know, our, 
and our kids are, I mean, our oldest is 26. She's got a master's degree. Wow. And I got a high school education. My wife and I both, you know, right. and our middle daughter just graduated with a bachelor's. She's in the master's now. We still have a 13 year old at home too. All girls. That's why I wear a hat. Cause I'm bald. Lucky you. Cause I'm bald. <laughs> yeah. I had three daughters and a wife <laughs> and a shop. So, yeah. uh, well, so you had, <laughs> you had your sanctuary. Of, yeah, I said I had to move out of the garage because it was getting bigger tools, but I just wanted a, a little space. Yeah. 50 more feet of space. And I've yeah. had that shop for years, and my wife has only been to the gate. I don't want her to the gate. When she brings me lunch, I'm like, stop out at the gate. You I'll come like out. No meet. girls allowed sign. <laughs> yeah. I like that. It's like a little rascals. Right. Well, and in the. E man, woman, haters club. <laughs> I can't do that, but um, because, you know, I mean, my wife's amazing. You know, what she's gone through as a kid and. Uh, what she's came out of too mm. and just amazing mother you know she's a partner with me in the in the alarm business of course so I always tell her that she tells me where to go she runs my schedule so she tells me what to do when I leave the house and tells me what to do when I come home so almost, you, I, I almost said that must be nice but then I thought about well, Janie you, telling me what to do, do. Well, you what guys, she does right well you guys are partners to the tavern but that's a that, that's worst more partnership her. ever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. We'll, this <laughs> we'll well, edit this part. I'm gonna post this on my Instagram so thirty five thousand or thirty six thousand will see it. Yeah, best partner ever. <laughs> you're gonna hear that, but you're gonna see my face be like, "That's yeah. not right." Well, it's not what you said; it's how you said it. Yeah. Right. No. No. It's, yeah. It's, it's it's a um, you know, it's it's we we don't. It's got to be a partnership, though, like yeah. it, it just like everything else. I mean, because <laughs> here's the deal. You constantly turning a hobby into a fucking job is not going to keep her real sane if she's not on the same. If she's not on board with it. And you're you're probably your crazy no. rapid fire mind. Right. Which is I'm in that boat. Like, I'm well, I know like I drive a, Janie crazy with well, my, it's like I could the wood business. Like I want to make a living doing, you know, in the wood shop. I think it'd right. be amazing. And probably the way my way I work until I do it. Right. And then it's like, ah, I want to do right. something else. Right. So it is good that it's, that's my out, you know? Sure. And, and, um, and she wants it too, of course, but you know, she also gets her well, and her and all the girls haven't bought a, a wedding present, a Christmas present or a birthday present in seven, eight, nine years for anybody else. Them? Yeah. Anytime <laughs> they go to a wedding, they're like, dad, I need a cutting board for the wedding. You know? I'll pay you. I'll, 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 not, you're not going to pay me, you know? Right. And my wife's like, I need a sign. We're going to, uh, I'm going to a birthday party for my friend. It's like, oh. You should just make a bunch of them. So like, <laughs> they're already pre Just insert just name here. Boy or girl. I'm, just like, <laughs> I'm all out of Cindy's. <laughs> hey, uh, I was thinking this year for Christmas, you should make everybody cutting boards. I'm like, oh, yeah. Are you going to come sand for four it's, days? Dude, <laughs> there's uh, actually Brent and Mel Bell yeah. there. They yeah. had, did you make those? What's that? Oh uh, no! I, no I, oh, okay, I, I, they got cutting boards. Oh no, that's fine. <laughs> listen, you guys are dicks. I said that to no, the listen, camera. I am way past that. I need to do every cutting board and every sign and well, every credenza. And, and the every, truth is, I, is as many as you've okay. done, there's a bunch of people out there. It, it, the thing is, is it it's very popular, right? Well, I got. I got my cutting board from you, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> the one with your brand on yes, it. Yes, the one that Janie, 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 Janie got bought. it for Christmas two yeah. years ago. Yeah, Janie yeah. ordered that without you knowing and sent me the brand, yes. and I redrew it. Oh, it was awesome, man. That, and and that's, that's so cool. You know, and, like, and really it is a great gift because, I mean, barbecuing, Traeger has, like, made that all great again, which I've always loved it in the first place. Anything, even when you, you got a little bit of CNC work in the right corner? Lower right corner, yeah, and then it should have been the left hip, but that's you know that's where we put it on the cows, but whatever. Well, I, so. I uh, <laughs> blame your partnership, uh, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, it's real. It's a personable gift. So when you oh, get yeah. something like that, it's it's it's. I always say people that know me like you know the the bells and. I don't get offended when somebody buys them like, because I don't want to build them all. That, that's uh, right. Not, then it's even more not a hobby. Well, I right. think even that too comes down when, when we, like we know you, mm -hmm. it's like, don't, nobody really, we're not asked, nobody's coming to ask you for a favor. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But also it's like, I don't know how busy he is. You know, it's like, cause I got, I got a ton of friends that do the, you know, like with what you do, mm -hmm. friends that are plumbers, electricians, 
guy, you know, like Tom, uh, you know, a metal guy that oh, I yeah. need some work and stuff done too. And I'm just like, well, you know, like I, I want to pay you. I want to employ your, your efforts, you know, but at the same time, it's kind of like, you see how good, you know, how busy you can be or how busy they can be. And it's just kind of like, well, you know, it, I don't want to be that guy that's just like, hey, I know you come do this for me. Right yeah, you now, don't want to put know? people in bad situations, you know, no. or, or feel where they feel obligated. You right. know, I mean, it, just our, the way we do our businesses, you know, we, we, we've been in business 22 years in the alarm business and we have, right. we have people that will, um, if we need a plumber, we go on our, on our uh, customer list and we look for plumbers. That's cool. And then if we need a, you know, wow, I'm an electrician, so we don't call electricians, but yeah, you, know, that. you know, but if we need landscaping, if we need, you know, whatever we look on customer need a bar, list first, some place to drink. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> We're on the we're on your list, right. but those people that spend money with us, we try. We at least give them the opportunity. Th- there's a loyalty aspect to it, right? We give them that opportunity. Yes. I'm not saying I'm going to go with them because right. if they're super high, but I got to give them the shot. No, and that that's right. actually such a great way to do things. That's how me and Jamie are the same. You we're, know, we're in a small town. We have to be. It, yeah, absolutely. But not everybody has that same. Uh, and absolutely, right. that's yeah. both very true. Yeah, and that and that can be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could be Exeter. It's just we can say that. Right. Yeah, I mean, I've been here my whole life. I think you've been here your whole life too. Yeah, yeah, I've been here my whole life. Um, the back backtrack a little bit with your Instagram orders and stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you have any like bad like problems like with like a horrible customer like my incident last week or yeah. our last podcast like we were telling you about with the Russian? Oh yeah, no. <laughs> no. nothing like that. No, no bad Russian story. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, no, I, I've, I've been real, and it's because I don't, you know, I don't have a website. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you. I've been really scared of doing a website right? because mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not saying that this would happen, but if I got 36,000 followers, I'm not saying everybody's going to order something, right? but let's just say 5%. Jeez. That's I've, still 2,500 yeah. orders. I would say, just know, say, say like you had 700 orders one morning. Like that's enough to I be like, I don't have 700 pieces on the shelf. I right. mean, I tend to build now if I'm building like I for a company, um, I built 75 cutting boards. For right. It. Now I did have some extras and I just threw them aside. So like with gifts or something like that, then yeah. I had them already glued up, already planned, ready to go. Right. But I don't have just finished pieces because all pieces are pretty much, you know, they're custom. Well, and that, and that's what you're selling too, because in the, if you come into this big mass production, it, it, it loses that feel. And now I've you hired 15 I mean? guys and I'm not touching this stuff anymore. Yeah. Now, now it's not a hobby. Now it's really a bit. Now, right. yeah. Now the woods. It's, paychecks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's now a hobby business now. And then it would just be a business. The story behind the wood now is like, we've got it at Lowe's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not sure what day, but here's the receipt. It was, was on sale. sale. It was a good day. Yeah. We got Panda on the way home. Yeah, that's the that's, that's, that's the story now. Instead yeah, of, it, was the, <laughs> it was hot. It was July 7th at 232 when we got there. We were late because we had a flat on the trailer. Yeah. No, or the, it's not those stories Yeah, anymore. no. It's not that it was a barn in 1934 in Lemon Cove. It's, yeah, you but, know. but as far as like bad experiences with it and how, I haven't had any mm-hmm. because people order and I don't, I generally take most, of, unless I've done business with you before, mm-hmm. I take payment in full before I even do it. And then I give them, you know, like a 10 day window to get right. it done and get it shipped and then ship it out. Um, but I mean, we, and that's what people are probably looking for is that, that custom, that personal experience, mm-hmm. you know, it's pretty, it's authentic. I think that's what a lot of people are, have been craving the last few years, even, even before COVID it was, and now even more, especially with COVID. Well, we've just dis- we've disconnected from our work for sure. Yeah. I mean, we're, I, I mean, Nothing against Hobby Lobby, but everybody's buying shit from Hobby Lobby, right. and and nobody's going to the local dude right. to go get some stuff. Now I right. don't know that I, I'm sure there's some other you know garage guys doing stuff and have CNCs, but the CNC stuff has been my kind of my forte. You know, like right. I didn't go to school for that. I just learned it. I learned how not to do it first. Yeah, which is how you normally learn, right? Right. That's how yeah. I learn. Those of us that didn't go to college, that's how we learn. So, um, actually, speaking of that, kind of the how we learned, um, kind of lead into the relationship thing. We'll start off with uh, 
with the father relationship. So it's saying, I think it's something kind of interesting you and I have talked about before. I think there's a lot that we have in common. Obviously, Connor as well, because we actually share the same father. Imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't know. I got brown eyes. You got blue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Might be the mailman's kid. <laughs> I think it's Lucas. I think we've had yes. that vote, though. We th- Lucas is the, the one that may not be. <laughs> Quite. So anyways, but we think we have the same mom. Yeah. We're not sure either. But anyways. <laughs> you were there. I mean, uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> So, but like, I think, you know, like you were saying as you were growing up like that, the way you learned, you know, like how your dad was with that mm-hmm. kind of, it, cause it was the same thing with us. It was like, you know, Hey, hand me the screwdriver and you hand the screwdriver. And I said, I want the Phillips. I'm like, you didn't say you the didn't Phillips, say that. you know, and then, or, a driver. <laughs> and then also when you had to learn out what, what a damn Phillips head screwdriver was for the first time. Yeah. I used to call him cross tops. My dad would scream, that's drugs. Yeah. It's called the Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> I think hey, he's one it's of like, those. I got deals. those in the other drawer. You know? <laughs> he's one of those deals too. To tell my dad, is like, hey, you want the you want the screw stick? The, the, screw, screw, stick. the screw stick. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. Well, my dad had <laughs> these toolboxes because it was like a menagerie of crap in the toolboxes that he got from. I don't know where, but it was just piled in there. And he'd say, nine sixteenths wrench. You know, you go mm-hmm. to the, and they're spread out everywhere. Nothing's organized. You're like digging around for it. And he's yelling. Swear you know, to God, nine sixteenths. <laughs> what the wrong with you? Nine sixteenths. You know, I'm like, I don't know where the hell it's at. Like I'm digging through. I'm, I'm bringing him, trying to bring him wrenches. And he's like, not that one. I want the snap on one. I'm like, like, I'm not even into fractions yet. I don't even know what you're yelling. I'm about. like, there's 1800 wrenches in here from every Chinese company. I don't. How am I supposed right. to find the one snap on that you decided to buy one day? You know, yeah, dig no. through and find out. That that it sounds I- identical yes. to us. It's like you go in, it's like there's half of dad's tools, half of his dad's tools, and it just kind of dumped in. Some stuff is half organized, and if you didn't put something back, the stuff that was organized was usually hanging up. Yeah, oh yeah. Anything in yeah. the drawers wasn't. But if you didn't put it back where it was supposed to be, that was about ass chewing, mm-hmm. damn near an ass beating. Depending, you know, sometimes it was an ass beat. Man. It just it was if you were especially if you were 10, 11 years old and you got a little lippy. Oh right. yeah, yeah. Then shit would go flying across. You know, the nine sixteen wrench now became a weapon mm-hmm. that I just hand delivered to you. So now you're assaulting me. Yes, you know, you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> that's right. That's what that's what it was like that's growing exactly. up. <laughs> Who would have known? We have been champion dodgeball. Um, Seriously. Dodgeball well, our dad had diesel trucks and stuff, so he had big old breaker okay. bars. Oh, and then, yeah. oh, yeah. Big, you know, big wrenches. Yeah. Or sockets that were like, I'm like, what do you put this on? You <laughs> He's know, like, like, I don't know. It looks I'm cool. Like, yeah. Oh, no, that was that was dad, too. It was like, you know, going shopping for tools. It was just like, don't know what this does, but it's going to look really cool in the drawer with everything else. You know? My <laughs> looks dad, big. after the, the cabinet stuff, he... He went into, uh, he started working for a tow company. Then yeah. ended up buying a little piece of it. And, and But he, he, they'd tow these cars in, and then nobody would claim them or pick them up, and they'd file lien sell on them. They'd junk them. Well, they'd go through them. And uh, so a lot of those tools came from trunks. Right. So nice. it was literally piles and piles of tools. Wow. And and no, I mean, like, you know, on a, like a box, in, a box in wrench, you know, half the lobes cut <laughs> off of it. But he's like, oh, I'd like the, you know, I, He's like, I like the grip on that one. <laughs> yeah, I like the other side of that one. It's better. You know, I want that one, you know, like, okay. uh, you know, but, but I do stuff like that a little bit too. You know, right. I mean, you look at my toolbox, it's not, you know, dialed in perfectly. Right. I know where everything's at, but it's not. Oh yeah. But I'm also not screaming at my daughter, go get me a fucking wrench. You know? <laughs> that was what I was going to do. That. That's where I was going to go with it. Was how, how do you see yourself doing the same thing that your dad did as far as like when it comes to like teaching? Right. So, like the way you learn, and I no. gotta imagine it's obviously very different with girls. Yeah, no, I don't teach the same way my dad taught. Now, if you had yeah. boys, do you think you probably would? No, I, I now I don't have boys, but uh, so I can't really say for sure. But no, I don't, I don't think, and it's not that I, I dislike my dad, and I didn't, and it's not that I dislike the way that I was disciplined or taught, but right. I just, there was things that, that I said early on that I'm going to do that different, which I'm right. sure you did as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've all done. And I'm sure it's what our parents did as well. You yeah. Know, they said that too, you know, but I, our girls, we always instilled, you know, college and work and the girls have always worked. Like we always bought them a car when they turned 16. Right. Right. And 
it was a tax write off. I mean, we didn't. I mean, Hell it, yeah. It was a business car. It was a sales vehicle. Hell know? yeah, it was. <laughs> so we bought them. A, and, and the reasoning is we would buy one car. And it was a new car. It's a write off. Right. But I'm only buying you one car. That's going to get you through college. That's going to get you through. Now, wh- now you can keep that car if you take care of that car. When you start your family, if you've taken care of it, you can trade it in and get you a family car. Right. And right. if you take care of it, it's worth more than if you don't take care of it. Mm-hmm. And we're going to pay for the car, and then we're going to pay for insurance because, you know, it's a business car. we got a little bit more liabilities on it, but I don't pay for gas. Right. Mm-hmm. you got to have some skin in the game. And I'm not going to be – I'm not going to supply fuel – so you can run all your friends around all the time right. because she, her dad buys her gas. Right. Because I had a friend like that and we jumped in his car all the time right. because he didn't pay for gas. So they got to have some skin in the game. Yeah. No, I, th- I think that's, that's a great way to do things. That's how we've done it too with our kids is even, you're trying to teach kind of a lesson in there too. There's, I mean, there's all, the obvious lesson of responsibility, you know? Yeah. And that's like, like you said, having some skin in the game is the easiest way to kind of instill that in there. Yeah, I mean, all of my skin was in the game. All of your skin was probably in the game. So it, it's, you know, I'm asking you to do a little bit. And they right. never had a problem with it. They always worked worked hard. Right. Which I think that's what I'm most proud of, other than the college stuff, which is, which is I'm really a proud papa over that. But right. that they work and they work hard, both of them, yeah. the older ones. The 13-year-old, she's 13. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, she's working uh, on it. Yeah. <laughs> she's really not. But, uh, <laughs> um, but, but, you know, they've always worked really hard and, um, always had goals and, you know, it's our job to keep them on task for that goal. Yeah. Even when they don't think they can reach it. You know? Yeah. I mean, my daughter was working and in the master's program, which is crazy. Yeah. She just start crying. And I'm like, you got, Eight months. You can do anything for eight months. Yeah. Anything in the world for eight months. You got eight months. Just start ticking them down, ticking them down, you know? And she would, okay, okay, okay. So then she would start to come to me and be like, I can't do this. I'm like, you got six months. You can do anything in six months. <laughs> I mean, six months is, that's a half a year. It's not a big deal. Right. Know? Well, and, but when you're in the, when you're in the shit like that, it, it doesn't feel like it, you know? I understand, but I wish I would have had that. You know, somebody telling yeah. me, just stay the course, stay the course, you're right, going to be okay, right. just click through it. And, and you know, giving me s- sound advice. Cause sure. it's, because the advice I got was like, you know, don't be a pussy, you know. Like, <laughs> you know? Well, great, great, I feel better now. Right, you know? like, right. You know, but. Like, but, yeah, you're right, I should just stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, point taken. Right. Um, but she, um, you know, our oldest, she's. She's got a master. She's a social worker in Kings County. She's doing, she's doing great. Owns a house. You know, she just bought a house last year. That's great. Um, I think you know Sam, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then Ashley's got a bachelor's. I think she graduated like a semester early. Wow. Got accepted into a master. Whoop, whoop, saving money. <laughs> yeah, she ex- got accepted into a master's program. I think it was one of. I'm probably going to screw this up, but one of four that they gave in in the country. Oh, wow. She got oh, wow. one of them, but she's got to move to South Carolina, which is, it sucks. South Carolina does suck. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sucks. She's not, she won't been there. Be, it sucks. She won't be next to me. <laughs> right. Um, but at the same, she's getting when married. When you go today. visit, don't go in the summer or the fall or the spring and maybe not the winter. <laughs> well, so <laughs> I don't know what's so, a good season. So tell me the two weeks a year I can go. <clears throat> so like our a, brother, our brother Cole lives in North Carolina and he pretty much puts it perfect where he's like there's too many things out here that can kill you i don't like it Mm -hmm. and i'm like that's enough for me to not want to go out there anymore either he's like we have spiders we have snakes that swim we have (laughs) but they got bojangles yeah they got bojangles i think all snakes swim but (laughs) we just don't we don't have that much water around us well they're also not like water moccasins that are like no like that my wife's mark or copper copper heads at least our snakes yeah fucking make a warning before they're (laughs) gonna kill you (laughs) Well, they have, they yeah. have, they have, they have, it's their coming. <laughs> Listen, I'm a bitch when it comes to snakes. I'll be uh, the first to admit. Um, I'm right there. Same. I will, I yeah. will kill a human man to get away from one and not know, but I will not be held liable. I will not be criminally negligent because yeah. I go absolutely crazy when I see to get away from it. I'll leave my family. I love my girl. Like they'll be fine. You push them down in front of them. They'll be fine. Yeah. I just like, got to outrun them. Right. Yes. <laughs> see back to the zombie talk. Right? We've talked about this. What about the Russians? You're going to survive. 
<laughs> if you can outrun your family, you're going to survive the zombie apocalypse. That's that's yeah. the plan. Right. Is that the same as if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball? It's a lot like that. Okay. If you can outrun your kids, you can outrun the zombie. <laughs> <laughs> We're making t-shirts. <laughs> We're making t-shirts. <laughs> they're already on the press, right? Yeah, they're already there. <laughs> we, we've had, uh, but, you know, the girls are, the girls are, but we've always instilled college because we, we knew what we missed out on. You know, Can't don't get yourself? crazy. We no. Nope. Mine, mine, mine's out, but it's fine. Okay. Yeah. No, I hit the <laughs> table. I'm sorry. I saw him do it. Yeah. No. <laughs> we. Uh, um, but you know, you, you. We've always instilled college, and they because we didn't. You know, we got married yeah. at 18. Oh wow. My wife was 17. She hates it when I say that, so don't <laughs> tell anybody. Um, Is that legal. Uh, with a parent signature. Oh, okay. Her mom signed up. <laughs> had to sign a form, but yeah, <laughs> I got permission. She hates it when I say this, but I used to say that I was been her guardian until she turned 18. <laughs> <laughs> but she uh, now she's yours. She hates it. Now she, I, now I she runs your may, schedule. I actually may be divorced after this, so <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> oh. But 29 years in May. Wow. Uh, 29 years, been together 30. Wow. So yeah. Congrats. It's... it's this May, it's not easy. It's never, no. it's never easy. It's not supposed to be easy, right? Even for that, that kind of a time, man, that's a, that's impressive. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, there's people that struggle, and you know, I, well, hell, look, everybody struggles. But there's people that, that quit on it, just kind of like what like what you're saying, just with everything, right? With yep. with work, all those things. I mean, it's, you know, if you're, if you're willing just to, to give in on, on the pain and, and not willing to try to learn or grow from it, like, you're, you're never going to see 30 years like well, that. Well, it's the same thing. Like, you know, you don't want to fail. I don't want to fail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I love my wife. She's, we're, we're supposed to be together. Yeah. I mean, we're supposed to be. So, I mean, it's, she, when we got, when we got married, I mean, we, everybody told us, I mean, our friends, and family, everybody, you know, like, and I'll, I'll admit this right now. I, if my kid came home at 17 and said, hey, I'm getting married, I'd be like, I'm, handcuffing you to the bed. <laughs> I will stand by the door and I will guard this door and you know I'll <laughs> take care of business. But I hate to say it because it sounds like I'm old, but it was a different time too. And yeah. we were raised different. We were, I'm not going to say we were on our own to begin with, but we pretty much what were, you know, I was yeah. working and she was working and um, we just wanted to, we we're going to start our lives anyway. So we'll, might as well do it now. It's just a, your experiences too, or <clears throat> they're going to be different from your kids, mm-hmm. yep. you know, like all in, and like you said, it like it being a different time. It's just, it was a different situation really, you know, what you guys experienced, what you guys went through is it, it'd be like you trying to explain to your kids, like, look, here's the roadmap to, to my life. And this is how I went about things. Uh, here's what you do. And here's what you don't do that that map is going to be completely different for them that it's never going to look the same as yours. I think, but I think a lot of people, parents and just people in general, Mm -hmm. I think that's what they do. I think they say you need to do this because this worked for me. I did A, B, C, and D and I got E and it doesn't work that way for everybody. I mean, Mm -hmm. people, for instance, my wife, when we got married, everybody told us not to. You're going to get divorced. It's, it's, you know, it's never going to last. You're, you're too like, young. Damn it. I should have listened. Know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know? And then there was, I, I joke about it, but it's semi true. There were times in the first 15 years that we probably should have got divorced. <laughs> no, seriously. Like, like, I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it's, it's true. true. <laughs> because, because we're like, you know, I, we should get divorced. But you realize if we do get a divorce right now, those people that said that will be right. And I, they can't be right. right. So out of spite of them being right, <laughs> kept us we're together for together. a couple years. No, and we found the love again. But you know, you just work through whatever <laughs> yeah, you're working through. Right. It's easy to give up. It, absolutely, that's it's that's easy. Uh, it's easy to throw in the towel. We'll see. And then, and then, have you and your wife had that conversation too about things? You know what I mean? Like, like pretty much like what you said. Like that, you know, giving up is easy. Oh yeah. Like this is obviously going to take some work. Sure. I feel like there's so many couples that don't have that conversation. They don't have that kind of an honest, open conversation that like, you know what I mean? It's like, but I'm the mushy one. I am. eh, It's not, it's not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying she's not, but I'm, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the sentimental one. I'm the, 
The one that wears the heart on the sleeve. Absolutely. I mean, I get my feelings hurt right (laughs) now. Me too. But does she rub it in your face and like sometimes she's like stop being a pussy? (laughs) She has said that, which causes me to go into a different mode. We're not going to talk about it. Sound like like my dad. (laughs) (laughs) Get the nine sixties rich (laughs) in the Russian. We've been through everything three and four times. You know what I yeah. mean? Cycles. I call them cycles. You know, you go through yeah. the, and now we're, I mean, we're really, really good place now because the girls are older, the two older girls. We still got Charlie at home, but, and financially it's better because, you know, we've been in business a long time, you know, things are, so financially it's better. And then we're able to travel a little more. We're able to do, not so stressed about, how do we buy diapers? Yeah. You know, or we got to, okay, let's write a hot check to get diapers and formula. Right. <laughs> and we'll cover it tomorrow because I got this job coming in, you know, back yeah. in the day. Oh, yeah. But, but those make you really like the days now. Yeah. You know, like well, because it's a struggle together, too, and that's that's absolutely. part of the, the building. We, we watch, you know, like Netflix at nighttime. That's like my favorite part of the day. We both right. put our sweats on or shorts and just lay on the couch and watch TV. That's how you know you're getting old. Yeah. Cause that's that is now my favorite thing to do too. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I am. Because okay it's when you finally that. are like, I get to shut everything off. Yeah, right. shut the brain off, shut the body off. Right. I'm just gonna go and relax. But finally. we do get to enjoy each other on a different level. You know, yeah. we're not worrying about we're not fighting about. I mean, we still have to worry about money because we have a business and, right. and bills. But you know, it's not dire straits like it was when we first started. Right. You know, it's not. Right. I mean, I, I went from making ten dollars and ninety three cents an hour to going into business. Right. You know, and going into business was a huge gamble. And I remember, it always her, is. And I remember her saying, I can budget for ten ninety three an hour. I don't know what you're going to be making. And, and the, but the way my brain works is like, exactly. I can make a million dollars in a day. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then we're set. And, and then I make zero tomorrow. And she, <laughs> right, and I'll she, take the rest of the year off. Yeah. And she's saying, well, you know, in her brain, she's like, she wants a security. Yeah. Because right. from her childhood, she wants that security. And, well, and let's, be, let's be honest, there's a little bit of like real reality in her <laughs> argument Absolutely. there. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But in the end, she trusted me. She knew I wasn't going to put us in a bad position. Right. That, that even if it didn't work, I would do, I'd dig a ditch if I yeah. had to, to pay the bills. Right. And I've done it. You know, I mean, I've, I've worked yeah, well, a and couple that's the deal. You, at a time. You would it. never be able to do that on your own. Like make that decision as a, as a husband, as a father. I wouldn't to be able to. If I yeah. was single. I would be the biggest piece of shit. You know, I'd be la- I, look, everything I do is for my wife and kids. Yeah. At least that's the way I feel about it. Right. Because I don't, my motivation is in them and having them be proud that I'm their husband and, or their dad. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's self soothing for me. Sure. You know, it's, it's more, I want them to be proud of me. Right. I just want them to say it more. <laughs> and I know I you know what hear I mean. Like, could you just write it down? <laughs> just write it Maybe down. Maybe a note, damn it. Just write it down one time. Okay, Dad's, I'll laminate it. I'll CNC it into a board, hang it in my Dad's shop. Dad's feeling sensitive today. <laughs> Dad's always Leave sensitive. Leave me a hug. Dad's always sensitive. All right, so since uh find a segue into health. Health. Yeah. How's your mentality? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I mean, there's Depends obviously. Depends on how long I'm at the shop. Okay. Right. Well, so. <laughs> that's my therapy. So, that's the deal. Like, you even said about, like, you needing to find a hobby, you know, with, I'm assuming it was with the police force when you were a police officer, yeah. correct? So, it was more or less that you needed to find something to relax yourself, something to kind of disconnect mm-hmm. a little bit. Yep. So, I mean, even going to that aspect of it, you know, just the the, the therapy aspect of the therapeutic activity of, of finding that hobby and, and like what that did for you. Well, it's, it's it, like, I'm very open about, I, I, I see a therapist on a normal basis. I've seen, I mean, I don't see her every week. I see her maybe depends on what's going on. Yeah. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. sometimes it's every three months, sometimes it's twice a year. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's every two weeks, you know, I mean, it's not, I, I've, I've been very open about it because when I came up in the police department, it was that old school mentality too. It yeah. was like, 
If you talk about it, you're a pussy. Right. If, you feel, if you feel <laughs> like this, you're a pussy. You take you that, know? you ball it up, and just stick it in there. Yeah, and don't think about it. And then what happens is you put your gun up, on and get to work. Exactly. <laughs> but then what happens is it ends up balling up and you end up with this ball of bile in your gut. Yeah. Right. And you literally fight anything that loves you away. Yes. I'm talking dogs, cats, kids, parents. I mean, you, you fight it all away. Well, that's and a then, pretty extreme thing with the with the police force. I can imagine. You know, and especially then you end the up drinking it away too, or mm-hmm. you drink it away, or you do both, and then you end up losing it all. Right. And then at some point down the road, you go, "Shit, if I had just talked to somebody, maybe, right. maybe it wouldn't." And you know, anytime there's a traumatic incident, they would send you to the psych. Right. You, know, you got to go get cleared. And I got pretty good at getting away with not going. Yeah. You know, I'm a salesman too. You know, I'd be like, oh, I can't go that day. I got to, we, we're pulling wire on a big job. I, can I, can I just reschedule? I'll call you. And I'm like, oh yeah, cool. That's fine. You know, you're, you're a cop. You're trustworthy. Sure. I'll just call you and schedule. And I'm like, you're never going to yeah. <laughs> You know, because, you know, from my childhood too, you know, you're a pussy if you talk about it. You right. know, if you have any emotions, you know, it's. You know, the whole, I'll give you something to cry about, you hey, know? Yep. Mm-hmm. which I've literally never said out loud until right now. <laughs> <laughs> Other than maybe therapy. But, um, they, uh, uh, but you know, I, 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 you have to, you have to, I mean, you got to yeah. talk about it. You, if it's bothering you, cause it's going to turn into that. Yeah. If not, and you're going to lose everything, but you go into these critical incidences and you know, the last one, um, was we had a house fire and. There was a baby trapped in the house, and I just talked about this today. This is crazy. Hmm. Um, with the guy that was with me, um, I wasn't even supposed to be there, which, um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm, I was raised religious from my grandmother, so I think that maybe I was supposed to be there, right. you know, in some weird way. Right. You know, I, I was given my daughter's class. It was the last day of school in 2007. It was like May 31st. And I had to do a, I hope we have time for this story. Yeah. And edit that out. Right. Yeah, no. no, we're good. And we had to do a, um, the teacher had contacted me and said, she was like in second, third grade and said, Hey, we'd like to last day of school. You know, it's half day. We want to come do a tour of the police department. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'll meet you down there at nine o'clock or something. You know, eight right. thirty, nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. So I get up that day cause I wasn't working. So I got up that day and got dressed to go to a alarm job. I went and got the guys out. You know, I was going to go get the guys out. My wife said, you're not wearing uniform? I said, no, I'm not working today. Then I don't know if you know this, but this stuff is not real comfortable. All right. You no, know? and <laughs> if I don't have to wear it, I'm not wearing it. And she goes, well, I think you're du- I think Ashley wants you to, wants to see your dad in uniform in front of her classmates. Play the and part. I was like, oh. Because <laughs> all I'm thinking about is I got to do this and then go home and change. Right. And then go to work. I'm like, that's eh, another step. All right. So I love my girls. So I got dressed and went. <laughs> Did the tour on the way out. They, um, I'm good with kids too. So I'm handing them all their stickers. I locked them in the cell. And oh, yeah. I can't find the keys. <laughs> oh, you know, I guess you're going to have to be in jail. And they're laughing, you know. And, well, I would officer, literally leave at that point though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, oh, I got to call. <laughs> oh, sorry guys. Well, on my way out, because I'm not even on duty. Uh, on my way out, I'm walking the kids out to the back gate, handing them stickers. One of the other officers who's like a little brother to me, always has been, um, and I had a hand in training too. He comes running. He's on duty. comes running out to get in the car. I'm like, okay, kids, get up against the wall. And he blows out of there. But I'm like, what's he got? Right. I've got everything on. I'm like, no, 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 no. I got to go to work. You know, get the kids Mm -hmm. out. And then another officer working detectives comes trotting out. Right. And I jokingly said, I go, what's he got? And he goes, ah, it's just a house fire. And I was like, oh, like, ah, that ain't us anyway. We're just going to block traffic. Right. And then I go, you know what? I got 10 minutes. I'll hop in with you. And I'm messing around in the car. We're laughing and joking. And we get about a block away and dispatch updates. So said there's a one-year-old baby trapped in the house. Ooh. Well, now it's not laughing and joking anymore. Right. And we um, roll in and uh, David's car was parked up front and door open. And I knew... When, I, when we got there, I knew David was in the house. There was no question. Right. And so we ran around, and he was at the door, and um, we got in the house, couldn't. It was too bad. And 
we went around the other side, and the house is fully involved, like flames and the, the, the wires have crashed down on the car in the driveway. Now the car's on fire. Uh, the fence is on fire beside. Like, it's right. pandemonium. And um, we got up in the – I got up in the window and got in the house trying to get the kid out, in it, but it's just – it's bad. Fire gets there, gets, gets in there because they're equipped. Right. I'm kind of burnt and kind of, you know, well, the baby – uh, was gone and firefighter, uh, Wes Grimm, um, yeah. comes out. Wes actually got an award for this, which he deserves every bit of a word for that. Cause he wasn't fully dressed when he went in that house right. and I was halfway in enough that I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable, but I was still in there. Right. And, um, anyways, the baby, the baby had, had passed and, right. and, uh, I, there's witnesses everywhere. So I go start trying to take statement, you know, and I don't know that my face is, I got black soot all over my face. My uniform's melted. I'm like, so what'd you see? You know, and people are like, are you okay? Like citizens. And I'm like, yeah, why? Why would you ask that? <laughs> but adrenaline. Yeah. Right. So what ends up happening is I, once adrenaline wears off, then. Yeah. So my lungs are charred. They're um, got smoke inhalation. The boss is telling me you need to go to the hospital and get checked out. And I'm like, I'm fine. What are you talking? I got a mask on trying to get off. I'm like, I'm fine. What are you talking about? And then I don't remember anything else. Wow. Until I got snapshots of on the way to the hospital. But right. that forced me to deal with all the other critical incidences, mm -hmm. you know, in um, that I didn't, put that I didn't deal with. Yeah. It forced me at that time. And I was a mess. Sure. And I was a mess because we lost this child, of course. Because in my head, that's not what the way I saw it going. Mm -hmm. Right. All my data is when we show up, we change the outcome. Right. And there wasn't a damn thing I could do about that. Neither one of us. Right. And it it um, came close to destroying me. It ended up being that kind of moment that, that like you said, it kind of pushed you into probably something that you should have been addressing before. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and then, it, and then it opens up other doors, which you end up going yeah. down like, Oh, this, Oh, why? Oh, wow. Really? Well, so like when the, like when a therapist starts to direct things and make these connections mm -hmm. with your psyche and your life and, and your attitude, your approach to things, why something bothers you, why something doesn't right. all those little things. And they start to trace it back to where it's like, even in your childhood, we didn't realize where these things are actually stemmed from. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't, I finally, I think my wife actually said like, you need to go talk to somebody. Cause I like, I wasn't sleeping. I was just, yeah. I, just, I wanted to punch myself in the face. Like I was, and there was one night in bed that I was screaming, um, like get out of the house. I like the house is on fire. Like I'll get the kids, you get out of the house and I'm just drenched in sweat when she wakes me up. Yeah. And she's like, you need to talk to somebody. And so it, I had to go in the next morning with no sleep, of course, because it really <laughs> weirded me out. You know? Right. And said, hey, I I think I need to go see the psych. It's like, okay. It was no big deal, you know? Right. Like, go ahead, and here's the order, go. And I, when I got up there in the psych, probably the best thing that he said to me was he was like, everything you're feeling is normal. You should be feeling like that. He goes, you, you did A, B, C, and D, and you got this result. You should be feeling that way. Right. You're not crazy. Right. You know, but, but one of the best, which I'm sure for you, I can talk to a therapist, but if one of my buddies tells me something really, you know, about that, that probably helps me more because he knows me more than the therapist. Right. Does, sure. You know? Sure. And, and we've had that, we've had that conversation too, because I go see a therapist too. Mm -hmm. Same thing as you. Like I don't go, I went more consistently in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then it was a little more You're now supposed to you just go get tuned up now. Yeah. And now, yeah. So like, like I've always used it just like, you know, with like exercise, you know, like I treat it like the gym, like, and, and I always, because I think there, like you said, there's, there's a stigma to it or there was, I think it's starting to kind of go away. And cause people are talking about it more and people are That's more open. Why I'm about very it. open about it. I'm a hundred percent the same way. I'm, I'm a huge advocate for it. And I'm, and I'm also even more to the point of, like, look, I, I'm I'm not fixed by all means. I'm still a work in progress, which we all are. We all are. It's but at the same time, I don't need to have in my mind. I, I have it scheduled. I go once a month to go and talk to this 
unbiased person that has really just whatever insight to my life that I'm, I'm giving to her essentially, but I'm getting an open opinion and an honest opinion that I, I mean, I don't always necessarily agree with her, you know, but like I have great oh, conversations. No, no, I don't always agree with her, but I also feel that I don't necessarily need to go because it's like I went initially because I had a problem mm-hmm. where now like, I mean, you know, my next session, I may not have, I'll, I'll literally be like, damn, I got a, I got an appointment tomorrow. Like, what do I go talk about? Like, what am I going to bring up? And that's and, when you know it's, I can skip the next time and I'll go the yeah. time after that. You know what I've done though, is I've made myself sit down and then I just start talking and we end up finding something, Yep. you know? And it's just, it's like, you know what? This little thing started to bother me the other day, you know, or, you know, I got onto my kid the other day and it actually kind of made me feel bad. Like the way that I was acting, you know, like. I heard my father in my voice. Right. Well, of course, that's a huge conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you could go for two hours. Yeah. And then you just get, I feel like you just get in the meat. You're like, oh, and she's like, oh, okay, you want to schedule next time? Yeah. You're like, oh, I still got 15 more minutes, I think. We just you scratched. Feel, I can't. You feel like this is where the scam is. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, playing this. Well, she doesn't. Um, and I can tell, too, in just in the way that we're talking. Like, she'll go, like, you want to talk? Um, you want to schedule for next week? Right. It, which means, without her saying, "Hey, I think you need to come talk." That, you that found next something week. that we can probably. Or keep. she'll say, "What do you think? A couple weeks, a month?" Yeah. You know, so I I can see not that I'm fixed, but right now I'm doing okay. Right. You know, and I I don't I don't there is a huge stigma because that was our father's generation. Yeah. That you know. You don't talk about it, boy. You know, yeah. You, don't, you, you, don't you bottle just, it up and you just go to work. and Or you deal suck with it, it down and you yeah. just, you know, you deal with it that way or whichever way it is. But it, it's it's not, I mean, we're in 2021. I mean, and I didn't want, I don't ever want my kids to have to go through the same stuff that I had to go through. Right. I want them to go through their own stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want them to go through their own stuff and not repeat the same mistakes. I do, I do feel like there's a little bit of a, a resurgence in it where it's like if you were to think back into like the 60s, you know, that's like, uh, you know, when the, uh, you know, therapy was kind of like kind of becoming this like hip thing, right? And then it was like when the insurance companies got involved and they started charging you because you had to have a problem to go yeah. and those kind of things, then it was like, okay, then there was a little bit of a stigma because it was like you have to have an issue to be able to go to it yeah. because then it might be covered by your provider mm-hmm. type of thing. But I, like I said, they, like you, I, I've been an advocate for it, you know, for a few years now of just like, Hey, this is beneficial to, to just try to dig into yourself. Well, it's like you said, it's, it's the map, you know, the, you say that my map was this. Yeah. So you, sh- you know, but your map is going to be this. All I can do is tell you, I did this. I felt like this before, I did, I've done A, B, and C, and I feel like this. I'm not saying it's going to take A, B, and C right. for you, but find somebody. My lady might not be the right fit for you. Oh, no, find, that's it. Find your own person. Well, it's like a diet. It's like a like a trainer, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, if you looked at it, that's why I always try it. Like I said, I like to categorize, categorize it with health. You know, I mean, obviously, because it's it's mental health, right? Mental wellness. But if you if you were to approach it in the same kind of regard that you would with with your diet and with like your exercise routine or what, you know, like even your hobby is kind of in there for that reason, because your hobby is, it may be exercise. It may, you know, I mean, working on wood is physical. It's not like it's, it it, it can whoop your ass a little bit, depending on what you're doing. You know, you can be beat up and sore after it a little bit. So, I mean, you're getting some, you know, workout out of it, but you're also freeing your mind, you know, whether, whether you, you, whether you think about, yes. Like, and so like, even with me, like uh, the hobby thing is a huge thing with like me and me and Jenny were just talking about it just uh, like a couple of weeks ago about not have, like, what is our hobby? Mm-hmm. It's like, I turn, but well, I guess this is kind of like my hobby right now, mm-hmm. you know, but I have the tendency to turn my hobbies into work, you know? So it's like there, there is that little bit of balance, but like, I like to exercise. I like working out mm-hmm. and I only do it a few days out of the week. I don't do it every day. And I don't really go numb, but like I've, and just like listen to music or just focus on what I'm doing. I literally think about everything. I think about like my next day at work. I just let, I just, I've learned to not block out the verbiage and what the noises in my head. I'm just like, let them come. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm just going to keep lifting these weights and keep doing what it is I'm doing. I'm going to keep running, whatever it is, you know. I don't call it, um, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily call it meditating. Right. But every morning I get up and I make a cup of coffee and I sit, I just close my eyes and I think about what I'm going to do today. Yeah. You know, what that's going to entail. And if it's something I don't want to do, I just like, uh, I, mean, I, I kind of get through <laughs> that in my head. Like, right. I kind of, you know, like, feels, I, I do the feel sorry for myself a little bit. Yeah. To myself. Right. You know, because that doesn't work in my house, you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, I just kind of get through it and, and just kind of pre, I don't call it meditation, but that's kind of what I'm doing for sure. about an hour. I drink coffee. I sit on a heating pad because of my back, and I just sat there, just kind of, okay, today I'm going to accomplish this and this and this. I just kind of pre-plan that day. Well, you're but, mentally preparing yourself. Yeah. You know, it's a great way to start the and day. It's, and it's seven days a week. I don't care if it's Sunday, and all I'm going to do is piddle around the house or watch NASCAR all day. Yeah, I right. still do the same thing. I close. My wife says I'm sleeping. Sometimes it does turn into sleep. <laughs> but, uh, Sometimes I meditate a little too hard. I'm up at four thirty, five o'clock, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm thinking, <laughs> why'd you wake? Why'd you wake me? I mean, why'd you mess with my meditation? Yeah, She's I was, like, you I were was snoring, thinking so hard right now. <laughs> yeah. But but as far as therapy, you know, um, after that incident with um, the baby, there was some some news coverage, um, newspaper coverage, yeah. and I have my own um, opinions about. Um, that stuff, and uh, yeah. um, there was some stuff said in there that just wasn't, it was a flat out lie. Right. And it was, and I was feeling really um, bad about that. Yeah. You know, because it kind of made me look like, kind of made us look like we didn't do anything right. to help that baby. Right. You know, like we just sat on our hands out on the curb, and, you know, that's the way the newspaper article was written. It's really easy from the outside looking in to be like that and to be critical. Well, because, to, you know, I mean, there was some people, people don't like cops. I don't right. know if you know that or not. Oh, that's a surprise. <laughs> but they were like, oh, yeah, you just sat out there on their, you know, and I'm in the hospital at the time. You yeah. Know, I'm in the hospital. My wife is is um, being called and, and, you know, there's another officer there with me and um, I smoke inhalation. I'm still hacking. And, and so... But the first day back to work, there was an officer. He and I kind of came up together, and I always had a lot of respect for him. Worked in Farmersville. And we both ended up on the same call, like, in between Exeter and Farmersville. Right. And I told the guys my first day back, I was like, I'm just going to chill. You're not really going to see a whole lot of running and gunning with me tonight. I'm just going to be, you know, I'm yeah. still trying to process this whole thing. Because of my vest, I had washed my vest, like, 17 times still, still smell like smoke oh, yeah. you don't which get I'm that getting, out which i'm getting snapshots every time i close my eyes and i'm it's mm. messing me up right and so but the biggest hang up was this newspaper article and what are people they're gonna think i'm a coward right you know, and I, I almost killed myself should right. i have killed myself to try to get this kid yeah and um so i fought a lot with that and uh we just happened to be on the same call together and then ever just magically just kind of everybody's gone it's just he and i and we Used to be tight back in the day. We came up together. I'm leaned up against the car, and he just, and he's not a deep guy either. So right. for him to even say this, he was like, "So how you doing with all this?" And I go, I, "He goes, what's your biggest hang up?" I said, "My biggest hang up is how is what are people going to think that I just sat out there and didn't do anything?" You know. Right. And he said this to me, and I might cry saying it, <laughs> but but it helped me more than any therapist. He said, um. Uh, that that lady over there in your bed right now that calls you your husband, those kids that call you dad, and those of us that call you brother, though there's no fucking way in hell you sat on your hands and didn't do a fucking thing. He goes, that's all that matters. Yeah. And when he said that, it's like it took this huge weight off my shoulders, and I was like, you know, you're right. And what he was saying was, those people don't know. Right. They know there's no way that you set out on your hands when there's a baby in the house. I know you better than that. Everybody who has worked with you knows better than that. Right. And he goes, and you were in the hospital, because the chief was kind of in this fight with the paper saying, are you serious? Like, he's right. in the hospital right now. Yeah. Did he get smoke inhalation sitting on the curb across the street? Right. He's in the fire. Like, what are you talking about? You know? And, right. And so there's this whole back and forth, but it kind of feels like you're def He's defending me yeah. too, but you know, I was in the hospital and, right. and, uh, and, but it did, it took, it took a big weight off of me. And I, I told it, it took me a few years to tell him, I was like, Hey man, 
you remember you said that? And he's like, not really. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, well, you said this, and I thought it was pretty big of you because you're not a real deep guy, but you know, that, that meant the world to me. Yeah, like and it, that yeah. really pulled me out of something. He hit a spot. And he's like, cool. Like, yeah, good like, for you. I was like, you want to hug? That's and he's the, like, no. That's the deep side. <laughs> I'm like, you want to hug it out, Jake? And he's like, no, I'm Where good. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But, you know, your friends and people that know you the best sometimes can help you better than that unbiased third party. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know what they end up doing is they kind of point you into the simple direction of like. Simple direction. Of, of making, because it, it's, it's a typical guy thing, too, is to like totally underestimate yourself and know that. Like the papers bullshit, and who are they anyways for what they're saying mm-hmm. at that at that time, right? But like, you know full well that that wasn't the case, right? Why isn't your opinion about yourself worth it? Because that's that's also a thing we struggle with. But then when you have that friend or that family member that steps up and says something at the right time, mm-hmm. they're really just repeating what you're trying to tell yourself, but and, you're fucking ignoring. And my wife had said it, I'm sure. Oh yeah, and my wife had said it. You know, the the people, the ki- the guys that I worked with. I mean, not that they said it, but my wife had said it. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that's. I mean, uh, I want my wife's opinion on everything. You know? Sure, she's my she's my other half. But yeah, it doesn't mean the same because she's supposed to say that. It, right. That's well, see, you know that's what, I mean? what we we compartmentalize those things. See, yeah. so it's like, well, you have to say that shit. Mm-hmm. Which no, she doesn't. Like, well, it's if, like if she's she put, like my wife. She could tell you you're full of shit too. It's like, like when she puts on a dress. <laughs> she's like, do you like this dress? Yes, I like the dress. Yeah. Do you like it better than the other one? I don't know. That's a loaded you know? question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you if I say, do you like this or this, and you go that, because we're men, that's what we do. We go, choice, I like that better. But then our wives are, so tell me the reasons why you like that more. <laughs> well, I don't know why. Yeah. Well, then why? And then it turns into a whole thing. It's like, well, if you can't explain why, then why Why am I? I well, why, why are you even asking me then? You know what the bad part is? That, that's me. And Janie's the one that's like that one. I'm like, why that one? And it's mostly because I'm a dick. Because I'm like, yeah. I know she's not even. She just wants me to shut up. So I'm like, I'm not gonna shut up. <laughs> I told so my now I'm gonna bother you with it. I told my therapist a while back. I was like, I feel like in some situations I'm the woman and she's the man. Mm-hmm. You know, just the way it's because she's more. She's not as emotional. Not as yeah. You know, as I am. I'm not saying she's not caring because she's super caring, but she's very like. Yeah. And and I'm the one that, you know, it's it's on my shoulder. Oh. So you just work out? Uh, you work out a few days a week? Yeah, just do three days, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I try for three. If I know I'm going to miss a day, I usually squeeze it in somewhere else. But I used to used to go to CrossFit uh, over in Tulare <laughs> and did that, like, hardcore for a while. And just got tired of waking up and my legs fucking hurting. So. Yeah, I, you know, I've got... I got a couple of rods and some screws in my back, so from the police department. So, yeah. uh, I've oh, they give that to you like a retirement gift? <laughs> yeah, <I wish. laughs> they didn't give me a. Wa- they, don't, they don't give you watches anymore. They Here's a rod. They, they Would you say, like us to insert it? <laughs> yeah, I call it being put out to pasture. You know, you're like, yeah. you know, you you're great, you're awesome, you're running and gunning, and then something happens. They're like, okay, next. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah. um. Oh, well, we've used that one up. Yeah, nope, that one broke its leg. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. They're putting you out the pasture. You know, it's like, ah, oh, he's done. He's good enough. Just send him out there. Yeah. You know, let him die out there. You know, but yeah. um, trying to find a work something that I can do workout wise. That I mean, I can still work. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I can't work like I used to, but I'm almost forty eight too. So yeah. I don't work like I'm twenty two anymore. Right. Um, no, I, I've I've started feeling my age. To You're how old now? Lately, I'll be 38 this month. Well, it it creeps up on you for sure, and then um, one day you wake up and you know you look in the mirror and you got hair going out of your ears. And you're like, <laughs> what the fuck happened there? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I've, so that's always been a pet peeve of mine is hair in the ears. You know, so like in the ears. Yeah, well, you see men like old men; they got like hair. Like real long. Nose, you know, that's you actually know? supposed to help you. You have little hairs in there that help you hear. No, I'm talking like the black hairs hanging out the oh, side okay. or on top. <laughs> so they're not like the ones actually no, coming from. Not those, the ones on the outside of the ear. Gotcha. But I always check and check and check. <laughs> you know, in the mornings and after shower, check check. And I checked and I go to work one day. I come back, take a shower at night. I'm in an attic. 
take a shower and look in the mirror, and one's like, that long stick. I was like, where did that wasn't there this morning? I it, wish it, that would grow here. It knew it was <laughs> looking. It knew you were looking, so it waited. <laughs> it was it tucked back it's behind me. It, back, like, it oh. was like, watch this. <laughs> I was like, good God, when does this start happening? Fucking old age. Yeah. And then, um, but, you know, as far as, you know, I can't do any, I can't do any setups or anything like that because my back. Yeah. Plus, um, I talked my way back uh, after the back surgery and then got hurt again. And so I'm still, I mean, I get around, but I can't wear a gun belt and go be a cop anymore. Right. No, I mean, I'm sure there's, you know, I'd like to ride a bike. Levels. Think, just to, I mean, I'm, my weight's fine. Yeah. It's just the. You ever, um, you ever done a, like a rowing machine? Like the, I have a Concept 2 rowing machine. Hmm. It's, um, it, it's one of those deals. Like I, I, I hate that workout, but I'm really, I'm good at it. Cause I'm, it's like one of the few CrossFit moves. Like when you're tall, this actually benefits you. Cause hmm. most guys are like. And I liked the aspect of CrossFit was what I liked was like the kind of the speed, the multiple workouts and stuff. Shit. Like do these pull-ups with these four guys and three sacks of concrete. On top oh, of dude. It. Yeah. There, some of that stuff gets insane, you like, know, but like ow. the rower, I, I, I'll get off of it and I hate myself for doing it because like, I'm just, I'm gassed, but it's like, there's a cardio aspect. There's a resistance aspect to it, but, and, and it's actually a really good stretch because it's one of those things you, I mean, you kind of have to, bend a little bit but you also end up stretching out and leaning out maybe that's one that would yeah maybe you know be and it, and it's and like i said it's a it's a great cardio you know move that's i like i said i actually hate the exercise but i make myself do it every day every every day that i work out it's like actually part of my warm up do you so, do it at the end or at the beginning oh your warm up yeah so, so usually usually in the beginning and then sometimes like there's a you can roll for meters you can roll for calories and like you, you think you're burning calories, you're fucking not, and that's why you hate it even more because it takes like fucking five pulls and it's like one. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, normally if it's something that I don't like, I procrastinate till the end. Yeah, so uh, so I'm like the opposite. If it's something I don't like, I get that shit out of the way. Depends on what it is, though. I mean, if it's yeah, I'm like that with food. If it's something like if I don't, I, the peas are on the fucking plate. They get eight first, agreed. and then I move on. Agreed. Agreed. I. There are some things I just do first. When I was in the police academy, I volunteer for everything first. You know, get pepper sprayed, tased, like all that. <laughs> because I wanted to be able to laugh at everybody else. That actually else. sounds like fun. Not have anxiety knowing when, my, when when's my coming. turn. I'd be like, me, I'll go yeah. first. Well, so yeah, I can guys, laugh at everybody. My brother has some great stories about all that shit when they're doing it in the military too. You oh, know, yeah. They had a, they actually made them tase the next guy in line. Like, oh, yeah. They had to tase them. We, we uh, in the academy, we did a, uh, I will, a person will rename will remain nameless, <laughs> but uh, a good friend of mine, we're like brothers, um, always have been, but we were in the academy together, kind of like a buddy system, there yeah. a few of us, and they put you in a room, put your mask on, you know, it's a real low level other than the military, it's not the same as the military, my dad was in the military, be like, you're pussies, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but they put you in a room and they popped us, you know, OC grenade, essentially, let it yeah. get filled up, and you got to crack your mask, and he goes like this in front of you, fills up your mask, and then you got to reseat it, and blow it out, and then recite your whatever. Yeah. You know, like the code of ethics or your name and ID number, whatever it is, and then they let you leave. Right. And, and they'll mess with you. They'll be like, sure, you good? And you're like, <coughs> yes, sir. <Yeah>. You know? <laughs> okay, go ahead. And you go out mm-hmm. in the hallway and, you know, break your mask off and choke and puke and everything else. Well, just so happened, like, we all volunteered first because – that's what I always did. Well, they're like, yeah, we'll do it. He stands right beside me. So he's first. And he cracks his mask open and they do it. And he gets, and he couldn't get a seal. Mm-hmm. And he started to kind of panic. And then, so he just broke for the door and the instructor grabs him and he's a strong dude. And he like <laughs> shucks the instructor, like one arm, whoa, bam. <laughs> He's like, let go of me. <laughs> the door. And then I'm like, I don't think I want to do this. Because <laughs> I'm next. So like, this is why I want to go first. Yeah. So I can laugh at you. Because I couldn't laugh. <laughs> I couldn't laugh until later. You know, after I was done puking. <laughs> but you got to be able to do that stuff. I, I hate pepper. I'm actually allergic to it. Oh, really? I never used it. Because, uh. you know, you spray somebody, you still got to touch them. Right. Yeah. 
You know, it's not like you can spray them and go cuff yourself and take yourself <laughs> to jail. When I was a meter eater, they gave us it for the dogs. It works for the dogs. It works. Sometimes. Not all of them. Pit nope. bulls don't give a shit. Pit bulls don't give a shit about You know much. who doesn't like it? Cats. Oh, they don't like it? Nope. Never had to spray a cat. I didn't landing. have to, but I was just walking by it, <laughs> okay. and it was kind of. We're gonna have to edit this. I was pissed off at the at the previous dog that <laughs> did it, and the cat was just looking at me. And I was like, "What?" And I gave him a little shot. The fucking cat's all. <laughs> so the worst part is, I caught a little bit in the air and got it in my fucking Karma. mouth too. And I'm like, of oh. course you did. They just gave us new canisters. We have to edit this out. They uh, they, they just gave us new canisters. And they were like new, like high powered, whatever. They just issued them to us. I mean, another is it the foam? Is it like the no, white stuff? no? It's sprayed like way out there. And is it know? the red? Oh yeah, yeah, like the chili. That oh, shit's yeah, fucking bad. straight that up. OC. They gave us the foamy white stuff one time, and I'm like, that stuff's not no, this good. stuff. And it gave a real good stream. So yeah. we we had it That's on. What I got the cat with. <laughs> so we go over to this this house, and there was this dog like on a chain, like a pit bull on a chain. I'm a dog lover, you know. So mm-hmm. and. We have to go around this chain because the dog's like, you know, bink, you know, barking yeah. at us. He's not trying to bite us. He's just barking. He's not being suit. So we go around, knock on the door, and do what we had to do. And we go walking back. And my, my buddy, he goes, hold up, hold up. I'm going to spray this dog. <laughs> <laughs> Same shit. I'm like, the dog's on a chain, bro. And you're like away from it. He's like, I want to try it out. You know, he's shaking it. And he's like, hold on. And he goes, he gets down on his knee and he sprays it. Why is he sprays it? I'm over by my car. The wind changes and blows it right back. And he's like, Ugh. I'm like, that's what you get. That's what you get for trying to spray that dog. That dog's on a chain. What that dog do to you? Exactly. He shoots it and he's gagging and he's got to go with them. They're like, what happened? He's like, my OC. And they're like, who'd you spray? Like, you got somebody in custody? And he's like, no, I was trying to spray a dog. <laughs> they, go, they go, was was the dog vicious? And I'm behind him going, <laughs> he goes, why'd you spray him then? He goes, well, you, you gave me the new can. I just tested it out. Like, Test it on the wall or tree or some shit. You know, not on the dog. That's fucking funny. <sighs> well, what else, what else you want to know? I don't give you my social security. I don't know. It's probably pretty good. We're at a minute 20 or an hour 20. Actually, hour that's 20. pretty damn good. We're pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's pretty damn good. It's probably, hopefully, it's going to get edited down to like 32 minutes because mm. there's some shit in there that might cause a divorce or an indictment. <laughs> Those are probably going to be in there still. Yeah. That's what we're leaving. That's the, that's only the good stuff. We don't edit after David. Yeah. <laughs> David's like, we got to take this out. I was like, I told you. What was David? I didn't watch the whole thing. I don't know. You, no, if you've watched the beginning of it, you've watched the edited one. Right. Because it was oh. pretty much in the beginning. And, and it wasn't bad, but. As a pastor. As a pastor. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to have you sign something from I here on out. I think he should like let that in because it might humanize well, and to the be honest, church even, a little more. And even the rest of it, like it's it's not terrible. It's not at all. It's not bad at all. Like, mm-hmm. And actually, it's it it was fun. You know, and I've known David forever. And and I think people, he, he he's authentic. People know who he sure, is. And they sure know is. where he's coming from. And they know they know that's him. You know, and I think... Even butt jokes, fart jokes, stuff like that. You know, I mean, that's that's. But that's a. But that's a. That's why I mean, my human eyes. Yeah, he's a human. He's a dude. Like it's not pastors yeah. shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, it, and I think most of the people there too at, at Rocky Hill know that. You know, and I think that's what they they actually love about him. You know. Yeah, because the kind of church I was raised in was way different. Oh yeah, you know the kind of church I was raised in in a Pentecostal church. God. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. That's where so, we eat fish, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, no, no. <laughs> no, it's not like they had the hair, you know, the big hair and the dresses and the no makeup. It wasn't that type, yeah. Thing. But it was basically what I say is everything was bad. Yeah, everything was a devil. Everybody's going to hell. You're going to hell. Sounds unless, like Catholic, unless you repent all the time. Yeah, you know. If, I remember asking a question one time. I was a kid, and I said, "So wait a minute." I said, "If I'm, if I'm good with God, I'm prayed up, and we go down the road, and a truck pulls out, and just before I hit that truck, and die, I yell, oh shit! What happened?'" And they go, "You're going to hell because you didn't re- repent." And I was like ten. I go, 
I don't think that's right. <laughs> you know, I got in trouble for saying that too. Yeah. You know, I'm like, you didn't repent. So you what gotta you be in a con- Oh shit. I'm sorry. Yeah, in a constant state of repentance. And I'm like, oh, I think that's what grace is for, isn't it? And that's what got my ass whooped. <laughs> so <Yeah>. like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't be, kept, don't be bringing this great shit in here. You know? Look at you, Mr. Smartmouth. Exactly. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. No, I uh, appreciate you coming out, man. This, this cool. is cool. Uh, I've, I've uh, been interested in this myself. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's a, like I said, even just to show you kind of the, the setup and how we do things and how we're learning it ourselves. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, man, like that was perfect. That was fantastic. Like it totally fit the mold of what we wanted to talk about and kind of. And you're still learning. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's it. It's like a cool setup. Though.